Welcome to Get the Facts, the program that provides you with information on government's policies and initiatives. I'm Theodore Henry. The new academic year is just around the corner, but as schools get ready, some are facing the added challenge of rebuilding from the damage caused by Hurricane Beryl. Fortunately, the Ministry of Education and Youth, through the National Education Trust, NET, has been diligently working to get these institutions ready. So, how is the recovery progressing? To shed light on that, we have with us Latoya harris Garty, the Executive Director of the National Education Trust. Welcome to the program, Mrs. harris Garty. Thank you. Thanks for having me. All right. Let's jump right into getting some facts. Can you give us an overview of the damage to schools caused by Beryl? Um, well, there are 330 schools uh, estimated right now, well, as of Monday, to be $3.5 billion in damage. Ooh. What we've done, we've sort of prioritized each school. So we have the schools broken down into priority one, priority two, priority three. Priority one being those that must, absolutely must, mm -hmm. work need to start like okay. the week after burial hit um, in order to be ready for school year. And priority two, uh, moderate hit, and then priority three, um, damage but can operate and we can have school while work is going on in both priority two and priority three. Okay. And a lot of the work um, on those two categories uh, being undertaken in the ministry's regional um, offices mm -hmm. in conjunction with schools who have the capacity to undertake that. Of course, with some technical guidance to ensure that we get in the best quality for the mo money spent. Important, important. <laughs> right. so, so, so you've given us the, the whole breaking down and the assessment. Uh, what else is contained in the scope of NET's response? So for our response is largely the priority one schools. Oh. Um, and we are sharing that responsibility to the technical unit of the ministry because there are 100 schools now as of Monday. In it, priority one? Yes, it oh. was 94 when the minister last reported. It's now at 100 schools. Um, and hopefully <laughs> it remains a hundred because of course, because of the nature of it, you know, right. we want those schools to be ready for September. So we don't want that number climbing anymore. Definitely. Um, and that is at basically $2 billion. And what we're doing with those or work has start at 68 of those schools and work should commence by the end of this week at the remaining schools. So we, Prior to burial, when we realized the potential impact, we did have some precautionary measures put in place in terms of um, uh, procurement preemptive approval from the PS ah. for emergency, right, right. Um, in initialization of emergency works. Mm -hmm. And uh, from that, we are able to get basically an assessment of um, a rough assessment initially, a more detailed assessment throughout the, the period following burial. And we basically initiated the emergency procurement, right. um, had contractors visit most of the sites. There are a few that we didn't get responses to initially, and I guess that would be one of the, the stumbling blocks for not starting in all 100. Yeah, well, yeah. I shouldn't say all, well, all 94 that was initially um, right. identified. The, the additional schools were added once we went through some assessments and realized that, hey, you're not a category two, you're actually a priority oh, one. Right. Um, so uh, it was following all of those things falling in line. We, we basically have started work in the six, eight schools. Um, some are slated to finish in around the first week. I think I have one that's actually finishing in, in, in August. Right. <laughs> one school out of 100, I but mean, we'll take it. it's staying. Right. Um, but a lot of them are finishing the first week of September, which uh, what, we've, what we're doing with the schools is to say, the contract and the schools to work out those areas that are mission critical right. to opening the doors, mm -hmm. um, finish those works, and then you can do the fine tuning, clean up, and all of those things to, to put that cherry on top, um, to have it done within the timeline. Um, there's some schools that work will still continue. Uh, so like I know I've seen some September 19th deadlines um, in terms of completion. Um, and it's just ensuring that we have uh, open lines of communication between the project managers, the, the principal, the chairman, um, the ministry personnel, and that we work with principal to ensure that those areas that he or she has identified as being priority for 
opening yeah, those are getting done all right so, so it's that's a pretty much comprehensive effort yes but uh, okay so the the number you gave me uh for the current status was 68 was it 68? 68 has started work right so work is ongoing actively in 68 right. there are about um 10 of those that they would have gotten uh possession of site um uh and that would have been probably on tuesday right some persons indicated they would have started with a holiday not tuesday on monday <laughs> but, but the question the question i have though is uh so would you be able to share the challenges that that net is experiencing with the the balance right so uh, part of the challenge is for the emergency works, one of the guidance that we got from the Public Procurement Commission is that, you know, since we're doing a lot of sole source, we should try not to have more than one, uh, mo uh, one contractor getting multiple. So you, you have, you will limited the contractors to like two, unless it was that we saw that the contractor was performing. So like I mentioned that there's one school mm -hmm. that is finishing in August and that contractor said, hey, I have two teams freed up. Come then, so I can, okay. and you're performing. So Get I need the schools. Right. <laughs> so then we would we would give we would award more than one contract to a contractor. Um, it is having the contractors the sufficient number of contractors in the required grade because you know each contract is registered um, between a grade one and grade three is what right. we're primarily working with. Um, Access in the areas. For some, for some schools. I know there's one school that part of the issue was uh, GPS line being down and it might have mm -hmm. been active. So uh, that was so one of the issues, right? A bit to go through. Um, okay. uh, but I think that school actually started work on the week, well, on the weekend. So we I'm, think. I want to come back to this, but we're <laughs> going to take a break right All now. Right. We're still talking about uh, recovery of schools in time for September morning. So we're at the break, but stay with us. We'll be right back. We are hoping that the time will come to be able to track these cards. Hello, hello, the house are burned down. And punish those who are, who, are, who are doing this. All too frequently, a unit is unavailable for an actual fire emergency, merely because it is responding to a false alarm. And it, 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 it results in most instances to a waste of resources, resources that could be used um, for more productive uh, purposes. So I want to encourage members of the public to desist from this practice. Welcome back to Get the Facts. We're discussing the rebuilding and the recovery efforts for schools damaged by Hurricane Beryl. Our guest is Latoya Harris Garty, Executive Director of the National Education Trust. Lady Harris Garty, you were discussing the schools. We had touched on uh, how we're going forward with the balance that have not been started just as yet. And uh, even during the break, we were discussing how there might be and there are supply shortages because other people are looking for this. Right. <laughs> so the question I have for you is, you have those challenges, but how, how is the, the net strategizing to get around them? Are there any international partnerships that can help out, that sort of thing? So we have reached out and through the Planning Institute of Jamaica and uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Right. Um, the message is really out there in terms of what our needs are. We have collated from some of the schools. So we have a spreadsheet that we've sent to the system for the schools to update and say what they need. Um, and Sorry, I know can I jump in here? What are you seeing on that spreadsheet? Like uh, a lot of the needs on that um, equipment, such as ICT equipment, um, furniture, that's that, that's pretty much um, where a lot, you know, student desk and chairs, some teacher desk and chairs, uh, ICT, as I said before, that's right. primarily the, the areas that we've seen coming out. Okay. Um, I know some of the schools have been challenged uploading the information because in some of the areas that were hardest hit, they still right. don't have internet right. Right. Uh, connectivity that's stable. But the information has been flowing, especially with, with some of the schools that we work with because we not just do infrastructure work, we also, we're a registered charitable organization. So there's our donor aspect, and mm. that aspect is coordinating with, with partners um, to ensure that we don't have duplications in the system and that the resources get here. 
Right. So, like, even persons who want to ship to schools, you know, it's important that you contact NET because the waivers that will be applied mm. can only be applied yeah, through a registered right. charitable organization. So, right. yes. So, so there is there is some some movement on the horizon, mm -hmm. and uh, the goal is all 100 of the the, the phase one. Yes, yes, yes. Awesome. So the, the the goal is by September we should have the 100 schools significantly um, ready for September morning. Right. Some of them will have work ongoing. You know, when you think about schools like Monroe, for example, you see where. Work will have to go on r w during school, but the critical areas have to be ready for September morning. Totally understood. Mm -hmm. You did cover, you did cover uh, in the first segment how NET is dealing with um, the rebuilding process and making it effective when you spoke mm -hmm. about the whole contractors not giving everybody too much work. But the, we have had conversations on this platform and certainly at a national level. This is going to be, as it has always been for the last few years, an above average hurricane season. So barrel has come, barrel has gone. You're going to get everything done and recovered for September. But the next one and the next one, what are the long-term plans well, that is putting in place? One, we're working on an um, infrastructure policy for the ministry, and that's a joint effort with the Ministry of Education. Right. We're also working on building standards. So we are very far advanced right. in the building standards, and the building standards covers early childhood to secondary level. Um, we've reviewed the secondary level, we've approved it, and the final deliverable is set for this month. So the Ministry of Education will have brand new building standards. In those building standards, we've looked at green energy, um, green building technology. Right. Um, you know, we're looking at water harvesting, we're looking at solar. Uh, we've really taken recommendations from Orlando Patterson and we've put, we've put those and incorporated those into the standards. And just for our guests, uh, give me some context for Orlando Patterson. So, oh, <laughs> so that's a transformation. We call it transformation report right. um, that basically outlines what are, the, what are the areas that we need to be hitting in terms of fixing education and transforming gotcha. education. And, you know, out of the recommendations, infrastructure was at, is pillar six, mm -hmm. and it is probably the one with the longest yeah, runway to completion. Runway to right. completion and cost. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, a lot of the schools that were hit and we see the damage, it's uh, because maintenance hasn't been the greatest. Um, that's one. Uh, some of them are old. You know, you look at um, Westwood, Manu, Mannings, those are schools that have more than 100 years yeah, old in history right there. Right. Um, and they've withstood lots of hurricanes, but I guess they're, it's, they're due for... A refresh and uh, part of part of the infrastructure we have the policy we have the strategy that we're working on um, and part of the strategy is for all our schools at some point um, over the next five to ten years to have a refresh um, utilizing the building standards so you know Jamaica has new building codes right and all of those underpin the the building standards that we have now so we're rolling out new building standards okay. if you look at our new or newer schools mm -hmm. they're not they weren't really damaged uh, um, you know. so so that, that's you just sneaking a little <laughs> hey the building standards are successful you know it it it, it really is yeah. um, it we, we we listen to the stakeholders. You know, heat was our problem. Mm -hmm. We increase in the height of the the, the, right. the the ceiling for the floor to foot mm -hmm. um, for cross ventilation to make the place cooler. Different things. Um, I know persons say we shouldn't use the louvre windows, but in our in our climate, louvre windows provide light and air to flow through. So right. it might just be that the the sturdiness of the ones that we we need we're using need to right. be focused on. So. The, the key is um, transitioning our infrastructure, utilizing the building standards that are now going to come into place, right. and also ensuring that we adhere to those standards. Got it, got it. Sounds like a great time to be a student. <laughs> <laughs> Again. Well, we, we, we are looking forward to all of that being done, especially for September morning. We know you're on the job. You've mm -hmm. explained what the net is doing. But we're in the final few seconds of the interview, and our guests, our, our audience, they're, they're watching. Uh, students, parents, teachers, they've heard you, and I don't know if there's anything that you'd like to say directly to them in these last few seconds. Um, I would just say, especially to our parents, um, the private sector, 
anybody who wants to give to education, uh, become part of our invested village. Um, join the National Education Trust. We're a registered charitable organization. I have to stress that because it, that comes with a certain level of accountability for what you give us and how you give to us. Uh, info at net.org.jm is an email that goes to our donor team to help any assistance in terms of if the schools are bringing in things, if you want to send things to your school. Um, for updates, we are currently updating our burial page on our website, which is net.org.jm. And that should have information on the needs of our schools based upon the feedback we're getting from them. Mm. Thank you so much. So this has been Get the Facts. Our guest has been Latoya harris Garty, Executive Director of the National Education Trust. Thank you for watching. And you know, she did say, be a part of the solution. Buy into the structures that have been set up and help us recover from this and future events. Until next time, I'm Theodore Henry. Do take care.